Hey everyone and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb and we're in the same room today. Look at this. It's all we're all in the same room. Whoa. We're finally uh, back together in the same place and uh, got the vibes back to like some of the original videos on the channel actually if uh, any of you guys have actually been around that long. So um, with that said today as you guys can tell from the title from the thumbnail we're going through the 10 saddest most depressing painful games of the 2010s of the decade yeah and viewer should... <laughs> discretion advised yeah if you are prone to throwing chairs punching your computer screens backseat sports is not liable yeah we you know we were thinking about doing the best games but we were like well what, what have we had more of in the past 10 so years the best games or depressing sad ones and so we thought why not do some of the depressing sad ones so that's where we're at today because we're never gonna have them again and that's the thing that's we want to put a positive spin on this we're never gonna have these depressing sad games again so that's kind of why we're going into this direction what, with things. One day we can look back and laugh at these games. Yeah, we'll be able to laugh at these one day, which is the beauty of it. Yeah. So it's pretty tough to choose. It actually there was, was, there was a lot. Yeah, and uh, it, the depressing amount of times that Wisconsin's going to show up on this list, and the amount of times that we had to talk about adding Wisconsin to the list, was painful, and yeah. it really did hurt. So coming in at number 10, with all that said, is the 2018 last year's loss to Michigan. Oof. It was a gut puncher straight down in the gut. Just nailed us all because we all kind of went into the season. We were hopeful. Obviously, we came off a few losses going into this Michigan game. But the thing about this one is all Husker fans were kind of hopeful that we could maybe put out a good showing. Yeah. Martinez was just coming back. We're like, all right, well, let's finally get our our you know foot on the right path yeah. here. Yeah. Let's take down Michigan and Ann Arbor. Uh -huh. That did not happen. No, yeah, and that was the thing. We all kind of came in a little bit probably overly hopeful yeah. that we'd see some pretty positive things going to the game, and Michigan took it to us. 56-10 yes. to 10 loss to number 19, Michigan. So they weren't even in, like, the top 15. They were 19th. Yeah, yeah. They, they ended up moving up quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously they finished the season well, but they were 19th at the time, and so we were all like, oh, my, we're bad. Yeah. Like... That's when we realized we were really, really bad. And we a after that, all Husker fans kind of admitted, all right, this season's not going to go well. It's Yeah, it's it's a wash. So that was why the game like really felt depressing. Because we like it was like and the realization. Gave, the players gave up, too. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. I mean, the Michigan players said it themselves. Literally, they were like, we smelled blood in the water. You just looked on their faces. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. we knew we were going to win. I mean, we only had 132 yards in the game. Michigan had 491. Gron Higdon destroyed us on the ground. In that game, it was 39 nothing at halftime. I kept watching. I mean, yeah, we were tears of sadness and oh. sorrow flowing during the halftime. But overall, the game was painful. Yes. And uh, it comes in at number 10. Number 9. First year in the Big Ten. This is the 2011 loss to Wisconsin. <sighs> Beatdown. Beatdown. <laughs> this is the last time Nebraska has had college game day. <sighs> oh, man. And Corso picked us to win. He chucked on the Husker hat. It was. We were all excited. We were going to face Russell Wilson. We were going to take down Wisconsin. It was number eight Nebraska versus number seven Wisconsin in Madison. And we came in really hopeful. I mean, we were 4-0 after a dominant performance against Washington two weeks before. And Nebraska fans were feeling really good. 2011 first bit season in the Big Ten. And I mean, it was a beatdown. Martinez threw three picks. Uh, Monte Ball ran for uh, four touchdowns and 151 yards against us. Yeah. That helped That's a him theme. <laughs> yeah, that helped him break the touchdown record that year. Yeah, oh. there just happens to be a theme of Wisconsin running backs absolutely destroying us. Yeah, who would have thought? And yeah, I mean overall, they I mean they had 486 yards in that game. They dominated time possession. It wasn't even close. Yeah, that was painful. Coming in at number eight is another heartbreaker to Wisconsin. This was the 2016 overtime loss to Wisconsin, 23 to 17. We were ranked 7th, they were ranked 11th going into the game, and we were 7-0 and it was, heading into this game. What a surreal time. Like, every week, you went, and we win for 7 weeks. It was That was a, magic, that was a magical ride <laughs> as a Husker fan. Like, looking back, it was like it was just unbelievable. Like, granted, those teams were cupcakes, but never in our lifetime, I feel like we just rattled off that many in a row. So yeah. season, we were like, what's happening? And this was our true test, and... Oh, we just we just came up short. We could have won the game. Mike Riley had some very bad game management. We could have kicked a field goal at the end. 
Um, like you just he just picks the wrong things every time. Obviously, this is the reason he's not there anymore. But it was painful. Could have walked away with that game. Could have not been in overtime. Yeah. Game management was terrible. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's really a deciding game in Mike Riley's tenure as well. Like, if you win that game, now we're suddenly ranked in the top five. We go to the Big Ten Championship. We go to the Big Ten Championship in Mike Riley's second season, and things are feeling good. But yeah. instead, that Ohio State beatdown maybe doesn't happen. <laughs> that maybe doesn't happen. That might be on the list. <laughs> So, I mean, like, literally after that, basically the wheels fell off for Nebraska. That was the beginning of the end for Mike Riley. Is that worthy of saying? Yeah, I mean, well, because Paul The Chris... beginning of the end. And yeah. the end of the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> In his oh. short three-year tenure. But uh, that definitely was a deserving top ten loss. Yeah, yeah the student became the master of that game. Yeah, Paul, Paul Chris. Chris. Just... That one was tough as well. So this list does not get any easier. Oh, no. Or actually, less comfortable. Fact, it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse. And what a worse way to start off Mike Riley's whole thing, his whole season, than a loss on a Hail Mary for uh, first BYU. week. BYU. Hooray. BYU. We were heading into Mike Riley's first season. We're setting this one up. We're like, oh, baby. We're coming off. Finally, we got rid of that wretched Bo Pelini. We got Mike Riley in here. I was terrified. We're coming in. We're going to be great. And then BYU, a, we, a team we were favored pretty heavily against. Pah! Hail <laughs> Mary right into our face. Another game management decision that would show that Mike Riley was never ready to coach at a big school like Nebraska. Could have <laughs> ran the clock out, but what do we do? A dumb run pass option, and look what happens. BYU gets a chance, and not only that, they drive down the field, get it to the 50-yard line, and and the whole theme of that year is we can't cover the pass. Seriously. And oh, oh my. I mean, yeah, we were up 24-14 at half, and... We're up 28-27 at the end of the game. Obviously, the Hail Mary takes us out, beats us. BYU had 511 yards. That was Taysom Hill's BYU. Taysom Hill's now like the quarterback for the backup quarterback for uh, the Saints now. Yeah, he's like their all utility their utility guy. Yeah. guy yeah. But uh, he was a great player, and he put up 511 yards on us as an offense. And again, right at the beginning of the year, you're like, oh. Oh, no. We might be bad. <laughs> I waited five hours, got the front seats in the yeah. student section, and just to watch that Hail Mary just right right in your face. It's like disbelief. It's like, how did we lose? Oh, yeah. yeah. And we didn't look good in the game at all. I no. mean, we, our defense looked terrible, and that was the theme throughout the whole year as well. So, a terrible overall game. Sad, sad, sad. And you this. couldn't turn on ESPN because that was the number one top ten play. Oh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. so it just got, kept getting reminded of it as well, so... Horrible. Painful. Number six, again, this one, it's just embarrassing. And that is the Northern Illinois 2017 <laughs> loss. And when we lost 17 to 21 to Northern Illinois. Yep. We were, we lost this game wire to wire. And it started off the first points of the game where Tanner Lee throwing a pick six. <laughs> That's <Woo>! a theme. <laughs> He had three picks this game. It was it was a mess. We had 384 yards. They only had 236. Key red zone turnovers for Tanner Lee. Just absolutely just handing them the ball. <sighs> we drive down the field, and then it's like, here you go. Yeah, it was terrible. And Tanner Lee, speaking of which, our guy oh, in the yeah. preseason, got to give him some love. Yeah, he threw a pick six in the preseason. Oh, yeah, so he's still killing it. Still doing still a great doing job. Still doing his great job for the Jaguars. Good stuff. So that one as well just really, really hurt. That was just a shocker. Like, we're Nebraska. We just lost to Illinois, Northern Illinois. Yeah. So at number five, we're kicking it back all the way to 2010. This is the 13 to 20 loss, the upset, the Texas upset. And it was horrible. Texas, the uh, this is this is how you set it up. The unranked three and two Texas coming off back-to-back -back losses in Memorial Stadium against the 5 and 0 Cornhuskers ranked number 5 in the country and we lose 20 to 13. This was the year that we were going to get revenge. Their team has sucked, they're down. Colt McCoy is gone. And after that, just absolute rigorment in the Big 10 Championship, we're like finally Finally, finally, revenge. we get to pummel them. And we're nine and a half point favorites. Everybody was talking it. The players themselves were talking and we're like, we're going to beat the crap out of Texas. And what happens? We just absolutely get out hustled at home. They had 62 pass yards and we lost the game. They, they, How? We were down. We didn't score like a, we didn't score a touchdown until the fourth quarter. 
And it was a kick return. Oh, baby. What happened? It was our last time playing Texas in the Big 12, and it is a sour note to end on with Texas. That's the last time we played them. I mean, I think about our last two losses to Texas. The Big 12 championship, Cole McCoy and Anamik and Sue. And then us, them derailing a really and good start. And then just the jabbing us in the heart to our best promise, most promising start, you know, of potentially Bo Pelini's tenure. Yeah, that one hurt a lot. So at number four, the foreshadowing comes to reality as our 2016 Ohio State loss. Well, it's not even worthy calling it it's a loss. It's not a loss. It was embarrassment, a beatdown, a pummeling, a dis absolute they dismantling. They took us to the back woodshed. And they, they snagged us with the, the spoon over and over and over. 62 to three. We were ranked ninth in the country and Ohio State said, you ain't ranked ninth. And we lost 62 to three, just absolutely embarrassing. We walked away from that Wisconsin loss in overtime. We're like, okay, we can bounce back. Rebound. We can beat Ohio State. You know, we're feeling good. Ironically, we were at that game in yes. Columbus. We decided to make the trip out. I was going to school in Ohio at the time. Um, I just graduated. So we were, I was going to school in Ohio. So we drove out, stayed at my place and we went to the game. And luckily, we were sitting in the first row of like one of the one of like the student sections. So like all the Ohio State fans were behind us. So they didn't realize that we were, we were Husker, Husker fans because we were also wearing red. Because <laughs> we were wearing red as well. But uh, yeah, that was terrible. Well, that was the game where Tommy Armstrong got like knocked out. Yeah, he was literally he didn't move, and we thought he like was like legitimately like horribly injured. I mean, everyone did. But then he came back out later in the game. It was the second worst loss in Nebraska history. There's not much else to say. It sneaks in, it is deservingly in our top five of the decade, number four. And that brings us to number three. Like we said, Wisconsin makes this list a lot because they always have our number and just like to, <laughs> oh, man. they like to crush our dreams. So our loss to Wisconsin 2014, we were ranked 11th in the country at the time. Isn't it just always a theme? It's like hype, hype, hype. And then, hype. And then Wisconsin. And then Wisconsin. We lost 24 to 59. <laughs> we came in eight and one. Our only loss was to number 10 Michigan State, and we lost only by five points. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the and the winner of this game was going to go to the Big Ten Championship, <laughs> of then, course. And then there was this guy named Melvin Gordon. And Melvin Gordon, the tale of Melvin Gordon, <laughs> one run after another, 25 carries to Mac. Smack. He stopped. Smack. He didn't play the fourth quarter. And he broke the NCAA record at the time. 408 yards and four touchdowns. Uh -huh. it, he didn't even play. He was like Steph Curry and the Warriors at their peak. Like, no fourth quarter for you. It was terrible. I mean, we had five turnovers in the game. This list, this would be higher on the list if Samaj P. Ryan didn't bail us out the next week and he breaks the <laughs> he breaks Melvin Gordon's yeah. record the next week at for Oklahoma. Yeah, somehow that 408-yard record literally only lasted one week. One week. I mean, that's insane. Came to hype, followed by absolute sadness. That one... 100% deserving a top three spot on the saddest moments of Husker football the last 10 years. Oh, so painful. That brings us to number two. The top two are especially painful because there was a lot more on the line in these games. And this one specifically, the Big 12 championship was on the line 2010, 20 to 23 loss to Oklahoma. And we were up. We were up 2017 and a half. We had led the whole game. And we don't score in the second half, which is definitely a theme of Bo Pelini being unable to score points, especially in big situations. Our defense was always there in the early tenure Bo of, years. Uh, in the early Bo Pelini yeah. years, but our offense was horrible. Yeah, I mean, again, it was number nine Oklahoma, number thirteen Nebraska. We fumbled every opportunity. We had three legitimate fumbles. fumbles yeah. Threw one pick in the end zone in that game. We threw away every opportunity. We Although, would. Alex Henry did kick a 53-yard field goal, which was the record. I don't know if it still is, but at the time, it was the record for the longest championship game field goal. So, shout out to Alex Henry. He was on our top 10 players of the decade list, which you should go check out after you watch this video. Link in, little, the, description little, link in the description. Plug. Um, but, yeah, it was just depressing overall. Oklahoma, last second. Or, let, you know, go-ahead field goals in, in the fourth quarter. And, and there was seven minutes uh, in the fourth quarter at that time. So, we were yeah. like, we can still do it. And again, just red zone no. turnovers. <laughs> no. they, yeah, you know, lost the turnover battle. You got to get the ball in in the end zone. Yeah, I mean that was a good Oklahoma team. Nothing against Oklahoma and them. So that moves us in to the number one, the most painful game of the decade. And nonetheless, it is the 2012 Big Ten Championship loss. You saw this coming to Wisconsin. We had beat Wisconsin this year at home, 30 to 27. This is our only time we beat wisconsin we finally beat in them. 
since we've joined the Big Ten, we have beat we've beaten them once. That's it. But it doesn't matter because we see them again in the Big Ten Championship. And lucky for us, Urban Meyer's Ohio State team is disqualified. So guess what? This is our chance. Nebraska, we've lost it. We've been screwed out of a big a championship, a conference championship twice. But this is the time. We've beat Wisconsin. Here we go. It's over. We're on to the Rose Bowl. We're going to do this. And then Wisconsin just drops bomb after bomb after bomb on us. 70 to 31 is the score. How? Monte this is a, Ball. This is a conference championship game. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, the nation was looking at us. We're like, is Nebraska legit? This is legit Nebraska. Oh, my. We were shown as frauds once again. And that's, again, been the theme of the decade. And you have to talk about how much that Wisconsin ran for again. Oh, yet gosh. again. All right. Yep. Yet again. Yet again. Our, running, our, our rush defense was absolute... Just Swiss cheese. Again, we, there were holes everywhere. Monte Ball ran 21 times for 202 yards and three touchdowns. James White, uh, granted, most of these guys these are, are all NFL. great running backs. Yeah. James White ran the ball 15 times for 109 yards and four touchdowns. And Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon, who's a great fantasy player, by the way. Why is, is he, is he going to hold out forever? We don't know. But anyway. <laughs> Nine rushes, 216 yards, 24 yards a carry on us. Are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> and we should have known. We should have known that he was going to just absolutely destroy us After and break the, the record. It, once we saw this on tape, like, shouldn't we have circled, like, please, for the love that is all that is holy, stop Melvin Gordon but from we running on us? False hope. We were given false hope by Benium previously. In the year and the rug was just yanked from, yanked under from us. all hope we had and that was the last time we were in the big ten championship or in the championship game and that tops off the list the 10 most depressing sad unfortunate moments in the last decade but we're gonna be rebounding our next video is the top 10 plays in the decade and there's some great plays it's, even in some of these games there's some great plays from nebraska which are really fun moments it's the lowest lows that'll make all the highs worth it exactly and we have gone through some pain together and nebraska fans know all about, about the pain. lows yeah we know all about it right now <laughs> even before we finish we just want to talk about a few of the honorable mentions i think we forgot to mention that before this but like specifically like the troy loss last year i mean that was depressing again we didn't put it on the list because adrian martinez wasn't playing in the game yeah so it didn't feel as bad as it could have because your starting martinez quarterback did you know your starting quarterback didn't yeah. lose to northern illinois exactly you know? for sure so that, that's why we didn't put it on the list obviously we, we even considered adding like the akron game as like a low the psych we didn't have because like we were there we were hyped we're ready to play then we don't soaked play. in water just yeah, having then, a good time yeah. Then we don't play, and then we end up losing to Colorado, which was a pretty depressing game last year as well. Um, obviously, there's plenty of other ones we could add in. I think Michigan we had like State. 30. We had, we we had, had lists of like games. 25, 30 games that we were picking from this top 10. So anyway, guys, we appreciate you guys checking out the video. As always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Backseat Sports, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye.